If you got your hands on the Samsung Galaxy S24, S24 Plus, or S24 Ultra, buckle up because we've got more than 100 awesome tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your new phone. All right, now let's dive into my favorite trick to give your Samsung Galaxy a real boost. This is the very first thing I do when I get a new Android phone. Before, you had to go into the developer options, but not anymore. Open your notification panel by swiping down and find the gear icon at the top right. Tap on it, then scroll down until you see accessibility. Go ahead and tap on that. Inside, you'll find vision enhancements. Now, look for reduce animations. This will automatically make things a lot faster than before. But if you'd prefer to be more precise, back to your settings, scroll all the way down until you see About Phone. Go ahead and tap on that. Inside, you'll find software information. Now, look for Build Number. It's right there. Just tap on it a bunch of times. Your phone will ask for your PIN or password, the one you set up on your phone. Once you've done that, congratulations. You're officially a developer. Now scroll down a bit more until you find developer options and give it a tap. Keep scrolling until you see animation scale. There are speed settings here. At the normal speed, it's a bit sluggish. But here's the trick. Set it to 0.5 for everything, and voila, your phone will feel super snappy. And don't worry, your battery life will not suffer one bit. Another great feature is adjusting text size and screen zoom. This is a cool trick that can make your phone experience way more comfortable. So, here's what you do. Swipe down from the top to open the notification panel. Tap on the gear icon. That's your shortcut to the phone settings. Now, select a display. Here's where the magic happens. You'll see font size and style. This is where you can play around with the text size. Make it bigger. Make it smaller. It's up to you. You can even make it bold if that's your thing. But wait, there's more. Back to display, scroll down a bit, and you'll find screen zoom. This lets you zoom in or out on your entire screen. Get up close and personal with your apps, or see more of your homepage at once. We'll stick with the default settings in this video, but remember, your Samsung Galaxy S24 is like a playground of customization. Make it your own by adjusting these settings to fit your style. With the Samsung Galaxy S24, you can easily get a smoother and sometimes even higher resolution experience, depending on your model. Let me walk you through it. First things first, swipe down from the top to access your notifications and hit the gear icon. Next. Navigate to the display option. If you have the S24 Ultra, you can actually crank up the screen resolution. By default, it's set to Full HD+, but you have the option to bump it up to Quad HD+. This is unfortunately not available for the S24 and S24+, Plus, but you can still get a cool feature to get a smoother experience. Back to display, check out this cool feature called Motion Smoothness. If you set it to 120 Hz, your screen will feel incredibly smooth, with fewer lag and visual mess. But just know that this is using more energy than 60 Hz, so if you'd rather have a better battery life, stick with the default 60 Hz setting. A good tip to extend battery life on your S24 is to embrace dark mode. Still in display, you can activate it right at the top. Screens nowadays use OLED screens. And one its feature is that dark pixels are actually turned off, meaning they do not consume any energy from your battery. Now, if you're planning on keeping your S24 for multiple years and would like to ensure longevity of your battery, here's another tip. Swipe down from the top to reveal the notification panel. Tap on the gear icon to access your phone's settings. Go to Battery. Then hit on Battery Protection. Now, for lithium batteries, two things can harm your battery longevity, keeping it at 100% for too long, and on the opposite side, keeping it 0% for too long. So you can either choose basic, which will make your phone stop charging once at 100%. Maximum, 
so your phone never charges above 80%, which can be seen as a downside on a daily basis, but you'll increase your battery life over the years. Or you can have the best of both worlds by choosing adaptive, as in, it will charge to 80% max while you're asleep, and switch to basic right before you wake up. By making this small change, you can significantly extend the overall lifespan of your phone's battery, ensuring it serves you well for years to come. Have you ever found yourself in a jam, like when your earbuds are out of juice right when your commute is starting, or your friend's iPhone is on its last legs? Well, here's a neat trick that can really save the day. Here's how to do it. Swipe down from the top twice to access the quick panel. Now, look for the little pen, tap on it, and select Edit Under Full. Swipe over until you spot the option for wireless power sharing. Tap on it to add it into your quick panel. Now, it's ready to go. Tap on it, and you'll see some instructions. Place your phone on its back, and then put your friend's phone on it. The magic will happen, and their device will start charging. Your phone becomes a real-life superhero, rescuing your friend's iPhone or your earbuds in times of need. Now, See how we needed to swipe down twice to reveal the quick panel? This can definitely start to be annoying the longer you need to do this, so here's a tip to change that. Swipe down twice, for the last time, and hit on the little pen icon. You'll now see quick settings instant access. You can now turn this on so you can now simply swipe one time, and there, no more finger swipe wasted. If you would like to get a better audio experience on your S24, here is what you need to do. Swipe down from the top to reveal the quick panel. Tap on the little pen icon. Hit edit under the full tab. Now look for the Dolby Atmos's feature and tap on it to add it to your panel. Now, whenever you need an amazing audio, simply go to your quick panel and turn on the feature. You'll thank me later. The displays on the Samsung Galaxy S24 series are great. They can go super bright and incredibly dim. But sometimes, you find yourself in situations where you need to adjust that brightness further. Maybe it's too bright when you're in a dark room trying to watch a few more memes before going to sleep, or you need extra brightness to combat the glaring sunlight. Well, Samsung has your back. Swipe down at the top to reveal the quick panel. Hit the gear icon to go to settings and go to display. As long as you don't have adaptive brightness on, you'll see the extra brightnesses option. Turn this on, and you won't fear direct sunlight on your screen ever again. Now you'd like to watch memes before going to sleep without burning your eyes. Swipe down to reveal the quick panel. Hit on the little pen, and select edit under full. You'll spot an option for extra dim. If it's not there, look for it below and tap on it, then hit done. Now your screen won't annoy you at night, but please remember that you'll better off not watching any screen before going to sleep. Let's move over to the always on display features that you might not know. Swipe down to reveal the quick panel, then tap the gear icon to access settings. Scroll down to lock screen and always on display. Toggle it on and then click on it to explore more options. Now, here's where the fun begins. Go down and hit on when to show. Auto keeps the always on display on at all times, except when your phone detects that it's in a dark room, whether at night of if it's a purse or your pocket. That's handy, as there is no need for the screen to be on if you don't use it for an extended period of time. Always keeps the always on display on no matter what. Tap to show only activates it while you tap your screen conserving battery when you expressively don't need it. As schedule lets you set specific times for the activation, and for new notifications makes it light up when you receive a notification. Another great feature if you love to Shazam lots of music you hear in different places is if you go back to always on display to turn on show music information. That way, your phone will listen to any music around you and immediately display the song info for you to take a look at. Now. 
If you'd like to keep making your S24 your own, let's dive into lock screen customization. First, pinch on home screen. Now, hit wallpaper and style at the bottom left. Hit the lock screen on the left. From there, you can adjust both the font and the style of the clock to your liking. You can also resize the clock and make it as big or small as you need it to be. You can choose the color of the clock. Right below the clock, you can tap and add widget you'd like to show on your lock screen. Then, you can also customize how your notifications appear. You can go from no notifications, icon only, or a detailed version, to which you can adjust how much of a box appear around them. At the bottom, you can add your contact information in case you lose your phone, and a good Samaritan decides to find you and give it back to you. Below left and right, you can customize it to call for any app you'd like a quick access to, like the flashlight. Top left, you can hit on wallpaper and put on any interactive or static wallpaper that you want to. Now before continuing with general tips, let's learn how to use the new AI capabilities of your Galaxy AI. The first one that is being hyped a lot is the circle to search. Swipe down on your home screen and hit settings. Navigate to display. Scroll down until you see navigation bar. Look for circle to search and enable it if it's not already. Now, how do you use this cool feature? Well, it's pretty neat. If you're using swipe gestures, simply tap on this bar right here. If you're still using button navigation, tap and hold the home button to invoke circle to search. Now, let's say you're scrolling through social media and you come across something interesting. Tap this bar and circle to search pops up. You can circle whatever item you want on your screen and boom, you get Google results for exactly what you circled. You can browse through the results and learn more, all without leaving your app. And here's the kicker, you can even use it with your camera. If you spot something cool and want to know more about it, just open your camera, point it at the item, invoke circle to search and circle the item. Now, let's talk about a handy AI feature that comes into play when you're on a phone call. We've all been there. Annoying neighbor making a ton of noise, background chatter, and it's tough to hear the person on the other end. Well, there's a solution, and it's as easy as swiping down twice during your call. Here's what you do. When you're on a call, just swipe down twice. You'll see an option called Mic Mode. Give it a tap. Now, select Voice Focus. What happens next is pretty cool. AI steps in and works its magic analyzing all that pesky background noise and canceling it out. Suddenly, you'll find yourself in a much quieter conversation zone, making it a breeze to hear the person you're talking to. This feature is a lifesaver in noisy environments. Right now that you can hear clearly, what about making yourself understandable, even in another language? A pretty cool feature called Live Translate is now available to us. Let me show you how it works. Slide down and hit Settings. Scroll down to Advanced Features. Hit Advanced Intelligence. Now, hit Phone. Turn on Live Translate. Before you leave, be sure to download your language and any language you'd like Live Translate to translate to. You'll now see the Call Assist button when you enable this feature during a call. Tap Call Assist, then select Live Translate. Your phone will send a voice message to let the other person know you're using a live translator, just so they're in the loop. Here, you can pick your language and the language of the person you're talking to. And now, whenever you talk, the person will receive an AI voice translating what you said, while you, on your phone, will be able to see the transcript of what is being said in real time. The next feature on our list the Samsung Keyboard's Writing Assistant. This nifty tool is built right into your Samsung Keyboard, and it's here to make your text life easier. Back to Advanced Intelligence. Hit Writing Assist. 
This will help either translate a message, style it the way you want to, or correct any grammar mistakes you might make. Here is it live on in text messages. I've written you got the apples I asked you to get. Now hit that little AI icon right there. It will open the writing assistant menu, where you can choose between translation, style, and spelling and grammar. You can translate it to any language that you've downloaded into your keyboard, for example here in Spanish. You can stylize it any way you want, whether you're in a professional setting, as maybe you're talking to a manager, or maybe you're talking to a teenager, and you'd like to be cool and use a more social way of talking. And then you can use the spelling and grammar mistakes to see if what you wrote is 100% correct or not. Back to advanced intelligence. The next one is interpreter, which is the one you're going to use whenever you're outside and directly talking to someone in another language. To find the interpreter, swipe down on your home screen to see the quick panel. Now look for interpreter and tap on it. You can now enjoy asking where the nearest supermarket is in another language, or maybe you need to tell off some lousy person trying to sell you a scam. Either way, interpreter is your friend. We now have the Samsung Notes, which will increase your efficiency while using Notes. Let's see how it works. Open your Notes app. Imagine you've copied and pasted something from the internet, and it's just a big jumble of text. No worries though, just tap on the AI button right here. Select all the text in your note. Now you get four options, auto format, summarize, correct spelling and translate. Let's focus on the first two. Hit on auto format. You can now either choose headers and bullets or meeting notes. Let's choose the former. Now let the AI work. And done, the AI gave us a title, subheadings and bullet points, making it much easier on the eyes. Let's go back and choose summarize this time. This is like magic. It takes all that text and condenses it into key points. If you'd like a more detailed summary, tap on the parameters icon at the top. Hit eDetailed and tap on Done. Super handy for focusing on the important stuff. Back to advanced intelligence, let's explore an amazing feature called Transcript Assist in the voice recorder. The best part? You don't need to toggle anything on. It's built right into the voice recorder. Let me show you how this tool works. Open your voice recorder. I've recorded an audio from two person talking to each other, and you'll see why. Now, let's open that recording, and you'll notice a transcribe button. Click it. Choose the language of the audio, English in this case, and hit transcribe. Give it a moment to do its thing. And there you go. You have the entire conversation transcribed into text. It's like turning spoken words into a written script, complete with sentence structure, and even the ability to distinguish different speakers during a conversation. This is particularly handy for interviews or discussions with multiple people. But that's not all. If your conversation was quite long and you only want the key points, you can hit summary. The AI will analyze the text and give you a concise set of bullet points containing the most critical information. Again, that's not all. You can also translate your transcript into another language. For that, tap on the translate icon at the top. It will then show you the language and the translation a couple of seconds later. Pure magic. Notes and all are great, but we all spend more time on the internet. So let's move further down the advanced intelligence list and hit Samsung Internet to access the Browsing Assist. This allows us to summarize and translate web pages. This feature comes in handy when you stumble upon lengthy articles or pages, and you're short on time, or dealing with content in a foreign language. Here's how it works. Open the Samsung Internet Browser. Navigate to a web page with content you'd like to summarize or translate. For example, let's say you're on a Wikipedia page about Warren Buffett, and it's chock full of information. Tap on the AI icon located in the menu bar to activate the AI capabilities. Choose the Summarize option. Watch as the AI works its magic and condenses the entire page into a concise summary, capturing the most important points. 
If you find the initial summary isn't detailed enough, don't worry. You can tap on the icon again and adjust the summary style. You can switch to detailed, which provides a more comprehensive summary while still saving you time. If the page is in a language you're not familiar with, you can also use the translate feature to convert the content into your preferred language. Absolute time saver. Now the last final feature on the list is the photo editor, which brings some exciting new capabilities to enhance your photo editing experience. Let's explore what you can do with this powerful tool. Open your gallery or photos app and select a photo you'd like to edit. In this example, let's use a picture of my cat. Tap the pencil icon or any edit option available in your app to access the editing features. Look for the AI button, often represented by an icon with stars, and tap on it. The AI will analyze your photo to identify areas that can be improved. One feature lets you adjust the orientation of your photo. If you're not satisfied with the current angle, you can tap Generate. And the AI will automatically fill in any gaps created by the rotation, making it look like the original photo. Tap this button, look at the original and the edited version, and you can clearly see that the AI did an amazing job. You can also manipulate elements within the photo. For instance, let's say you want to move a subject to a different position. Tap on the subject, drag it to the desired location, and resize it as needed. Once you're done, hit generate again. It's mind-blowing how it blends the surroundings flawlessly, making it nearly impossible to detect any alterations. So, next time you're not satisfied with the composition of a photo, hit the photo editor for a quick edit. But this isn't the last AI feature Samsung gave us, as another one is the instant slow-mo feature in the gallery app that allows us to slow down videos that were originally shot in a lower frame rate without causing choppy playback. Here's how you can use this AI-powered feature. Open the gallery app on your Galaxy S24 and select a video you'd like to apply the slow motion effect to. Play the selected video to preview it. To enable the instant slow-mo feature, tap and hold on the video while it's playing. The AI will automatically analyze the video and create a smooth slow motion effect, even if there aren't enough frames originally. If you want to fine tune the slow motion effect, tap the pencil icon located in the video player controls. In the adjustment options, you can choose the desired level of slowdown, such as one quarter, one half, or other options. You can also select the specific point in the video where you want the slow motion effect to start. This allows you to control precisely when the slow motion begins. Once you've made your adjustments, tap save to apply the chosen settings to your video. Now stay put, because I'm going to show you one last AI feature, and then I'm going to gift you lots of pro features that will make anyone around you jealous of you getting those in your S24. The last AI feature is the generative wallpaper, which allows us to truly have a unique wallpaper on our brand new S24. Here's how you can utilize these features. First, let's generate custom wallpapers. Pinch your home screen to access the wallpaper settings. Go to Wallpaper and Style and select Change Wallpapers. Under the Creative section, Choose Generative. Select a generative wallpaper style that you like. Now on to customizing this. After selecting a generative style, you can further customize it by choosing different options for abstract art, colors, themes, and more. Tap Generate to create a unique wallpaper based on your selections. Explore the different variations offered and select the one you prefer. Set the generated wallpaper as your home screen or lock screen background. Photo Ambient Wallpaper. To enable this feature, go to Advanced Features, then Labs, and enable Photo Ambient Wallpaper. Return to the home screen, pinch out, and access Wallpaper and Style. Choose Change Wallpaper, and you will now see the Photo Ambient option. Now, here is what it does. Select a photo from your gallery that you want to use as a wallpaper. The AI will add dynamic weather effects to our photo based on real-time weather, and on top of that, it recognizes the subject in your photo and applies effects accordingly, 
even making raindrops bounce off the subject's body. Isn't that crazy? Right. Now is the time to thank you if you're still watching by giving you these pro features I talked to you about. We'll start by the most cool and exciting ones, then the best ways to secure your phone in case anything happens before ending those pro features with surprising ones that can help tremendously. If you don't like your notifications popping up boring and even more so to know what a notification is about instantly, without the need of reading it, hear what you need to do. Swipe down and hit settings. Scroll down and tap on notifications. Go to notification pop-up style and ensure it is set to brief, not detailed. Now you should tap on edge lighting style, but you might have it grayed out like it is now. That's because I reduced animations earlier. Turn this off, and now when you go back to notifications, edge lighting style should not be grayed out anymore. Tap on it. You'll find various options for edge lighting styles, like edge or glitter. Choose the one that you'll be happy to see day in day out. Now let's hit advanced. Here, you can adjust the transparency and duration of the edge lighting animation to whatever you'd like for a more custom feel. So you now know how to have your notifications looking exactly how you'd like them to, but what about knowing what they're about without having all of them? Go back to the pop-up style menu and hit on color by keyword. You can now set any keyword to a specific color. Let's set up the keyword Instagram with a pink color, for example. Done, now do it for any app that often sends you notification like YouTube or a news app. And with only a quick look at your phone, you'll know where a new notification came from. The next hidden gem you might have not hear about is the fix up feature in the Samsung Gallery app. Open the Samsung Gallery app on your device. In the bottom right corner of the Gallery app, you'll find a button labeled Suggestions. Tap on it. The fix up page will display photos and videos from your device that the AI thinks it can improve for you. For photos, the AI may suggest various enhancements, such as removing blur, upscaling, or improving the color of your image. For videos, it will highlight certain parts, suggesting they are the best moments. Now, we've looked at the photo editor to fill an image, but there is more help AI can provide, so check this. Open the Samsung Gallery app on your device. Select a photo that you want to edit. Tap the pen icon at the bottom of the screen to access the editing options. In the editing options, you'll see a section that displays the current crop ratio. Here, it's set on free. To access the new feature, tap on the crop ratio, and you'll see various ratio options to choose from. Select a specific crop ratio, like 1 to 1 for a square crop, and crop your photo accordingly. Now zoom in all the way until the image gets less sharp. Tap on the save button if you'd like to replace the original, but you can revert it, or tap on the three dots here, and then save as copy. You can now see a new option that says keep current resolution, and another option to increase resolution. Choose the increase resolution. The AI will work its magic and enhance the resolution of your cropped photo, restoring details and sharpness. The image looks 100 times better now. This goes hand in hand with our next two tips, as it obviously works a lot better if your starting image is taken from a higher resolution camera. And while Samsung markets heavily its S24 Ultra 200 megapixels camera, or 50 megapixels on the S24, those higher resolutions are not activated by default. Here's how you can unlock its potential. Open the camera app on your Samsung Galaxy S24. At the top of the screen where it says 12 megapixels, set your camera to capture photos in 200 megapixels for the S24 Ultra, 50 megapixels for the S24. After taking the photo, open the Samsung Gallery. Choose the 200 or 50 megapixel photo you captured earlier. Use the editing tools to crop into various different parts of the image. You can crop and extract different sections of the photo to create new images. Save each cropped section as a separate image. These extracted sections will have a much higher resolution and detail compared to standard photos, and you can then use the increased resolution to get back the detail of each. Now if you're someone that tried to answer a call with wet hands on a rainy day, or while wearing gloves because you never bought the phone gloves you always said you needed, like me, you'll love this next feature. Open the phone app on your Samsung Galaxy device. Tap the three dots menu icon located in the upper right corner to access the settings menu. 
Scroll down in the settings menu until you find answering and ending calls. Tap on it. In the answering and ending calls menu, you should see the option to press volume up to answer calls. Toggle this option to enable it. Once enabled, you can now answer incoming calls by pressing the volume up button on your phone instead of swiping on the screen. You could also choose to end calls with the side or power button, but it's such a reflex to tap on it to unlock your screen that you would accidentally tap on it all the time and end up irritated against me for showing you the trick. So I don't recommend you use it. Now let's see what kind of pro features can help up in increasing security in our Galaxy devices. The first security feature I'm going to show you is something you should absolutely enable, as it may save yourself if you're ever in a dangerous situation. Open the settings on your Samsung Galaxy device. Scroll down and select Safety and Emergency. Choose Emergency SOS. Now what happens is, if you press on the power button five times, an emergency call will be proposed to you to call emergency services in your area as soon as you swipe up or not, depending on if you keep on require swipe to call. The emergency it will call can be edited under emergency number to call. Be sure to put your own, such as 112 in the UK and across Europe or 911 in the US. Also, think about this when traveling. Putting it the local emergency services could help tremendously if anything happens to you. Now, you will see at the bottom, send SOS to emergency contacts. Toggle this option on to enable it. To add emergency contacts who will be notified when you trigger the SOS, tap the add emergency contact button or the pluses icon. You can of course add multiple emergency contacts. Now whenever in extreme situations, both the emergency services and your emergency contacts can be notified quickly. Now if you're like me, you're unfortunately sometimes the target of spam calls, or maybe even worse, scam calls. Thankfully Samsung has our back again. Go to the default phone app. Tap the three dots menu in the top right corner. Go to settings. Find and select caller ID and spam protection. Enable Haya as your spam call protection service. This service will help identify and block both spam and scam callers making your life a lot less annoying. Now if you ever lost a phone, or if you fear losing yours at some point, having your stuff possibly seen by a stranger might give you galactic level anxiety. Here is a neat feature that should help a lot with that. Slide down on your home screen and hit settings. Scroll down to lock screen and always on display. Now hit secure lock settings. Note that you won't see the menu if you don't have any kind of locking for your phone activated. On this menu, you can see that both lock instantly with side button and lock network and security are both on, and you should keep these on. The neat feature here is the auto factory reset one, which once enabled, will launch a factory reset of your data after 20 incorrect attempts to unlock it, so no one will be able to plug your phone to a PC and extract your data from it. Now if you're ever in a situation when you fear someone might try to use your face or fingerprint to unlock your phone, you need to check out lockdown mode. Slide down on your home screen and hit settings. Scroll down to lock screen and always on display. Now hit secure lock settings. Turn on show lockdown option. You may need to enter your pin, pattern or password to confirm. Now press and hold the power button or swipe down from the top to access the power icon. If you activate lockdown mode, you face or fingerprints cannot be used to open your phone anymore, only your PIN. So if the person does not have it, your phone will stay locked. Now a feature made to protect yourself not from others, but from your own self in case you're used to listening to videos while driving or listening to loud music while walking and focusing on your audio experience rather than your own security. Swipe down and open your settings. Scroll down and select a digital well-being and parental controls. Scroll down within the digital well-being and parental control settings until you find the following options. Driving monitor, walking monitor, and volume monitor. Driving monitor is designed to enhance your safety while driving. It activates when your phone connects to your car's Bluetooth system and helps you reduce distractions while driving by limiting certain phone activities or providing reminders to focus on the road. Walking Monitor aims to promote safe walking habits. It tracks your walking behavior while using your phone 
helping you stay aware of your surroundings and avoid accidents. Volume Monitor helps you monitor the volume levels at which you listen to audio. It can be particularly useful to prevent hearing damage from listening at excessively high volumes. And don't you dare skip by this tip, because you know damn well you're pushing the audio way too loud sometimes. Once enabled, it will track your audio listening habits. You can of course customize the settings for each monitor as needed. If you're afraid you'll be losing your phone at some point, then did you know that you could find it even if someone turns it off? Swipe down from the top of your screen and tap on the gear icon to access the settings. Scroll down to security and privacy. Tap on lost device protection. Tap on offline finding. Turn on the offline finding feature. With offline finding enabled, your Samsung Galaxy device can be located even if it's turned off. This feature utilizes nearby Samsung devices to help pinpoint the location of your device. If your device is lost, you can use the Find My Mobile service on the Samsung website to track its location. For added security, you can turn on Encrypt Offline Location so your location data will require a PIN to be consulted. In addition to locating your own device, you can also use the Offline Finding feature to help others find their Samsung devices. To do this, make sure you are logged into your Samsung account on your device. If protecting your data against data-hungry corporations and power-hungry governments is important to you, swipe down and hit Settings. Scroll down to Security and Privacy. Then scroll down against and hit More Security Settings. Of course this is hidden behind multiple menus. Anyway, tap on Enhanced Data Protection. You can now activate both Encrypt Backup Data and Encrypt Synced Data. It will require you to create a recovery code and to keep it safe. So now any backups of your device can only be reached by you. Also, the Synced Data option means any data you're synchronizing to other devices will also be protected. Now the Samsung keyboard clipboard when you need to copy and paste anything is great, but it keeps a history of everything you copy and know that website and apps can request access to it. So if you had something like a password copied, this might become a big security issue, especially if you end up installing an app that turned out to be malicious. In order to prevent that from happening, open the settings on your Samsung device, scroll down and select security and privacy. Scroll all the way to the bottom and tap Additional Privacy Controls. The last option is Alert when Clipboard is accessed. Tap on to activate it. Once you've enabled this feature, your device will notify you whenever an app or website tries to access the clipboard, making it less likely that a security issue happens without you even knowing. That's it for the security side. Now let's discover some surprising features. I'm sure you've listened to music or podcast and felt like the audio wasn't as clear as it should for proper listening experience. Well, your Galaxy S24 has something to correct that. Open the settings on your Samsung device. Scroll down and select Sound and Vibration. Scroll further down until you find Sound Quality and Effects, and tap on it. Look for the Adapt Sound option, and hit the switch to enable it. Once Adapt Sound is enabled, you can select a predefined age group as a starting point. You can choose younger than 30, between 30 and 60, or over 60, based on your age group. This will apply a basic sound profile. Tap on any U to see what it does visually and to preview it. You can also choose a preferred ear for calls and set your sound preference between clear and soft. For a more personalized experience, tap on Add Personalized Sound Profile. This will guide you through a hearing test that assesses your hearing capabilities in both ears. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete the hearing test. The test will play a series of tones at different frequencies and ask you to adjust the volume until each tone is just audible to you. After completing the hearing test for both ears, your Samsung device will create a personalized sound profile tailored to your hearing. You can choose a profile name, such as My Hearing or any other identifier. If you'd like to access important widgets such as the record app from your lock screen, then this next feature will definitely be useful to you. Open the settings. Scroll down and select lock screen and always on display. At the bottom you'll see widgets. Tap on it. 
Here, you'll see a list of available widgets that you can enable or disable on your lock screen. These widgets include features like the voice recorder, music playback controls, and more. Now let's say we want the voice recorder to access quickly. Tap on it to activate it. You can also rearrange the widgets you'd like to be at the top positions by tapping on reorder at the top and drag any you'd like up or down. So now if we go back to the lock screen, I can tap on the clock and easily access the voice recorder, which is even more useful now that we have new AI capabilities to go with it. If you're tired of writing the same thing again and again on your phone, then be glad because those annoying days are over, as with the new Samsung keyboard abilities, you can now easily create shortcuts to copy and paste anything. Here is how to set it up. Open the settings on your S24. Scroll down and select General Management. Now hit on Samsung Keyboard Settings. At the bottom you'll see Text Shortcuts. Tap on it. You'll see a list of existing shortcuts if you have any. To create a new shortcut, tap the pluses button. In the shortcut field, type the short abbreviation or combination of characters you want to use as your shortcut. For example, you can use Try and use something that will not interfere with anything you could write somewhere. In the expanded phrase field, Type the full text or phrase that you want the shortcut to expand to like this. Then hit add and enjoy not having to type the same thing multiple times ever again. Okay, now if you'd like a quick and great way to access and use the split screen options, this is what you do. Open the settings. Scroll down and select Advanced Features. In the Advanced Features menu, tap on Multi-Window. You'll find several options here, so let's go through them one by one. Swipe for split screen. With this enabled, you can swipe up with two fingers from the bottom of the screen to split the current app in half and pin it to the top half of the screen. You can then select another app to use in the bottom half of the screen for split screen multitasking. Also, you can swipe apps around tapping on the middle left button while the order button lets you pair the app to your home screen or your edge panel. Swipe for pop-up view. With this on, you can activate pop-up view by swiping diagonally from the top right corner of the screen. If you're using the quick settings instant access, it might slightly interfere with it, but if you deactivate that, it will work smoothly. You can also choose the size of the pop-up as you see fit. Then, when you're using a pop-up window, tap on the top bar to get some settings and be able to customize so it fits your needs. All right, now if you're still here, then I applaud you because you are someone that is committed to transform their Galaxy S24 to suit their very needs to be best of your abilities. So stay put because I have a ton more great tips for you to use and enjoy. In case you didn't know, your Samsung S24 has a screensaver and here is how to set it up. Swipe down from the top of the screen and hit the gear icon to open your settings. Now scroll down and tap on display. Scroll to the bottom and tap on screensaver. In the screensaver settings, you'll have various options to choose from. Let's choose colors. You can then preview the screensaver by tapping the preview button. Did you know you could increase the size of the keyboard? Swipe down from the top and hit the gear icon to open the settings. Scroll down and tap on general management. Now tap on Samsung keyboard settings. Scroll down and tap on Size and Transparency. You can now increase or decrease the size of the keyboard, but also move it up with empty space below it, if you'd prefer it that way. Did you know you could change your keyboard colors to heavily increase its contrast? Swipe down and go to your settings. Scroll down and tap on General Management. Now tap on Samsung Keyboard Settings. Scroll down and tap on High Contrast Keyboard. Turn it on to get four high contract choices for it. Now the brightness slider might not be visible to you if you didn't activate the quick access fully available from one swipe I showed you earlier. Or, even if you did, if you swipe down on the left notification side, the brightness isn't available. To fix that, swipe down on the quick access side and hit the pen icon. Now, tap on brightness control and hit on show always. Now, no matter what you slide down on, you'll always get direct access to the brightness slider. 
Talking about notifications, if you'd like to customize their appearance to your liking, swipe down and tap on settings. Now tap on notifications. Once inside, go to advanced settings. Now you can tap on show notification icons and select if you'd like the three most recent ones only to appear. All notifications, a number of them, or none at all. I'm sure you'd prefer it on so if it's not, you can activate show battery percentages so it's visible from the top bar. While we're at it, if you've ever swiped away a notification by mistake and had no idea what it was, here's something you need to activate immediately. Go back to advanced settings of the notification menu in the settings. Then hit on notification history. Activate it, and now any notification that appears after you've activated it will be found here in your notification history, so you'll never miss anything that might have been important. If like many of us, you're getting tons of notifications daily that you'd like to focus on later, as you can't at the moment, this next tip is for you. Go back to advanced settings of the notification menu in the settings. For those used to the S23, this was called notification reminders, but is now called repeat notification alerts. So scroll down and tap on it. Now you can choose the frequency of repeated alerts from the options three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes. You can also choose the specific apps for which you want to enable these repeated alerts. Additionally, you can choose to hit on show snooze button, so then you can hit it so they come back to you. Here is an amazing trick that you should be using if notifications become way too annoying when coming from multiple different apps. Swipe down from the top and hit the gear icon to open your settings. Here tap on notifications. Now tap on advanced settings. At the bottom, tap on Manage Notifications Categories for each app. Now you can press and hold on any app. Tap on the Information icon. Now hit Notifications. At the bottom, a new line will appear called Notification Categories. Tap on that, and you can now enable or disable any notifications based on categories, making your life much simpler in choosing what kind of notification you're okay to receive and what you're not. If you find that the call backgrounds bore you so much that you'd rather sleep than take the call, this next tip is for you, because not only you can customize it, but you can also do so for any specific contact of yours individually. Here is how to do it. Open the phone app on your Samsung device. Tap on the three-dot menu icon, located in the upper right corner. From the drop-down menu, select Settings. Right in the middle, you should find the option for Call Background, and then tap on it. You're now seeing your default call background. Hit on background at the bottom. You can then choose anything from your gallery, whether an image or a video, and have it set up as your call background, or use the default video here, as its colors will match the photo of the contact calling you, making it a lot more interesting. Now, if you'd like to create a specific call background for each contact, go to your contact app. There, tap on any of your contact. Then tap on the three dot button on the bottom right corner. Here, you can tap on edit call background for that specific contact. Do you get annoyed when someone is calling you and your whole screen is now taken by their call? Like, maybe you were reading something important. If so, here is a neat tip for you. Open your phone app, tap on the three dots, and then hit settings. Now scroll down and hit call display while using apps. From there, you can now change it from full screen to small pop-up or even mini pop-up. Be sure to also turn on keep calls in pop-up so any calls stay inside the pop-up for a truly less intrusive call experience starting from now. On Samsung phones, you have the flexibility to customize the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen to your preferred layout or even switch to gesture navigation if that's your preference. Here's how to do it. Swipe down from the top of the screen and tap on settings. Next, scroll down and hit on display. Now scroll way down until you find navigation bar and tap on it. If you're a classic Android buttons user, hit on more options. You can now choose your way of having your return icon on the right or on the left side. Back a step, if you'd prefer to do it the iPhone way, Hit on Swipe Gestures. Something you might not be aware of if you struggle to see anything in you messages. Go to your message app. Now, if you'd like to zoom in, simply pinch to zoom in and voila. 
If you're on YouTube, you can also pinch to zoom in a full screen video. You can go up to eight times to really look at a detail you couldn't see in a normal full screen view. If you're someone that rages every time you quickly want to move from app to app because you find the whole process too slow, here is how you can get it done a lot faster. If you use buttons, then double tap on this button and it will move between your opened apps. If you use gestures, then simply swipe away and enjoy the feeling of sliding through your apps for easy access. Now if you'd like to stack your widgets so your home screen becomes more organized and efficient, you can do that. Here's how you can recreate widget stacks. Tap and hold on an empty area of your home screen to enter the home screen customization mode. Select widgets from the options that appear. Find the widget you want to add to your stack. Press and hold the widget. Then drag it to the desired location on your home screen. To create a stack, tap and hold on your widget, then hit create a stack. Choose another widget and hit add. And done, they now form a stack. One tip is to group them from a theme, for example all audio players, to easily swipe from one to the other while keeping a specific formatting. You probably noticed that some apps, after not being used for a moment, tend to start over from scratch when you then try to access them. This has to do with the memory RAM they're taking up. So to prevent them from starting from zero, here's a useful tip. Whenever you want a specific app to stay as is no matter what, go to the card view. On an app, tap once on its icon. Now, hit on keep open. Done, your app will now stay open as is. Super useful when having documents open on a specific page, for example. Talking about RAM, here is a tip to increase it for free. Swipe down and tap on the gear icon to open your settings. Scroll down to device care. You can check out the optimization module if need be, but for now, tap on memory. Now go to the bottom and tap on RAM Plus. This will use your storage space to supplement your RAM when the phone requires it. You can allow up to 8 gigabytes of your storage space, which is nothing at 256 gigabytes minimum storage space you have on your S24. Now if you're using social media a lot, you might have multiple accounts for the same app. And for that, the best tip is that you can in fact have a dual app feature allowing you to do just that. Here's how to set up dual messenger. Pull down to access the quick panel and hit on the gear icon to open settings. Scroll down to advanced features. Scroll all the way down and tap on dual messenger. In the dual messenger settings, you'll see a list of supported apps. Apps like Facebook, WhatsApp, Telegram, all of those work, but you'll need to check on a case to case basis. Toggle the switch next to the app for which you want to enable dual messenger and you'll be able to get a second app where you can put your login info and you'll be set up to easily use of your two accounts. Now if a kid in your family comes up and asks for your phone to watch something or play a game, you probably will say yes but worry. They'll go snoop around and end up selling all your stocks because they saw someone do it on TikTok. Anyway, there is a way to prevent that. Swipe down and tap on the gear icon to go to settings. Now scroll down and tap on security and privacy. Next, tap on more security settings. All the way down, you'll find pin app. Turn it on. With that, I recommend you also turn on ask for your lock screen method before unpinning. Now, whenever you're on an app, for example YouTube, go to the card view. Hit once on the app icon, then select pin this app. Now, you can use YouTube perfectly, but you cannot get out of the app unless you press both the recent and back button and then enter your lock screen method. If you use gestures, you'll need to swipe up and hold. If you're ever in bed and trying to look at something by rotating your screen, but find using auto rotate too annoying to do each and every time, then you will love this next tip. Here is how you'll do it from now. 
swipe down from the top of the screen to open the Quick Settings panel. Check to ensure that the auto-rotate icon is turned off. When it's turned off, your screen will be locked in portrait mode. Now, let's say you're reading an article in bed and you want to switch to landscape mode. Simply rotate your phone horizontally. When you rotate your phone, you'll see a rotation icon appear at the bottom right of your screen, indicating that the screen is trying to rotate. To manually lock the screen in landscape mode, tap the rotation icon. This will keep the screen in landscape mode without automatically switching back to portrait mode when you tilt your device. If you want to return to portrait mode, rotate your phone vertically, and when the rotation icon appears, tap it again. This will lock the screen in portrait mode. No more hassle for the simplest thing. Here is a great tip if you're one-handed, or if you love your S24, and sometimes you find annoying to have to go all the way up to do anything. Swipe down on your home screen and hit the gear icon to reach the settings. There, scroll down to advanced features. Now navigate to one-handed mode. Depending on if you use the buttons or the gestures, you'll either need to double tap on the home button or swipe down in the bottom edge of the screen. This will activate a temporary shorter screen where you can easily reach any of the top settings. If you find taking screenshots to be annoying, then you definitely do not know about this palm trick. And by palm, I absolutely mean palm because swiping with your palm takes a screenshot. Easy peasy. Whenever someone needs to use your Wi-Fi, but you don't want the hassle to actually give them the password, here is how you can easily share your connection. Go ahead and swipe down from the top. Tap and hold on the Wi-Fi icon. Here long press on any of the network available. On your network, tap on the gear icon. Now you'll see at the bottom a QR code. Tap on hit and then make you guest scan that and they're automatically connected to your Wi-Fi. Now if you're still watching, then this next tip is for you because as committed as you are, you must have your home screen set up in the unique way you want to and you would hate for it to be messed up by mistake. So here is what you can do to prevent that. Go to your home screen, tap and hold. Go to the settings. Now, turn on lock home screen layout. Now, no one can move it around and mess with your inner piece. If you'd like to adapt your theme to your wallpaper to give your phone a unique vibe, then check this out. Tap and hold on your home screen to open the customization options. Select wallpaper and style from the available options. Click on color palette. In the color palette settings, you will see options for different adaptive theming choices. You can choose from wallpaper colors. This option will adapt the theme colors based on the dominant colors in your current wallpaper. Basic colors. This option will use a set of predefined basic colors for theming. Try and use different wallpapers to find the style that you'd like the most. If you want the adaptive theme to apply to app icons as well, toggle on the apply to app icons option. You know when you're in a party and your phone is connected to a Bluetooth speaker, but others want to put their one song so it becomes a game of connecting and reconnecting different phones all the time? Well, no more, as now you can allow someone with a Samsung Galaxy device to control a Bluetooth speaker connected to your phone. Ensure that your Samsung phone is connected to the Bluetooth speaker. Swipe down from the top of your phone's screen to access the quick settings. Tap on the little pen icon. Select edit from the full tab. Look for Music Share among the available options and tap on it to add it to your quick settings. Now tap on it to activate it. Make sure that both devices, your Samsung phone and the other person's Samsung Galaxy device, have Wi-Fi turned on and are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. On the other person's Samsung Galaxy device, swipe down to access their quick settings. Tap and hold the Bluetooth icon to open the Bluetooth settings. You will see a list of connected devices, including your Samsung phone. Tap on your phone's name to establish a connection. Once connected, the other person can now control the Bluetooth speaker through your phone, playing music or adjusting settings as needed. Did you know you can record with both the frontal and the main camera on your Galaxy S24? Open your camera app. Now tap on more. You can now hit the dual rec mode. One extra tip is that if you plan on using this often, you can tap on the pluses icon and then choose dual rec. 
which will place it as a regular camera shortcut. Here is a neat trick if you'd like to use the volume key for better comfort while in the camera app. Open your camera app. Then go to the top left corner and tap on the gear icon. Scroll down to shooting methods. Tap on press volume buttons too. Here, you could set it to zoom in or out, which can be especially useful while taking a landscape shot where both your hands are holding your phone, so zooming in while pinching can be cumbersome. If you've ever missed an amazing video because you were too slow to open your camera app and switch from photo to video, here is how to quickly access video lighting fast. Open the camera app on your Samsung Galaxy device. By default, the camera app usually opens in photo mode. To switch to video mode without going through the camera settings, simply tap and hold, and it will start recording instantly, lighting fast. If you'd like to know how to easily create a GIF from your videos or your photos, here's how to do so on your Samsung S24. Open the Gallery app on your Samsung device. Select a video from your gallery that you'd like to turn into a GIF. Top right corner, tap on the three dots. Now tap on Open in Video Player. Tap on the video and you'll see a GIF icon appearing. Tap on it and you'll be able to select any portion of your videos to be turned into a GIF. You can then save it and share it whether you'd like to. Now you can also create a GIF from multiple images. Go back to your gallery, then select a few images. Now hit on the Create icon below. From there, you can hit the GIF icon to create one. As we've just learned how to create GIF, you may have noticed a couple more things. Back to the video player watching a video of yours, you can tap on it and this time select the screenshot icon to take a screenshot of your video easily. Also, back to your gallery, you can take multiple pictures and transform them into a collage or make a movie from them. If you'd like to know how to use the auto reframing feature to keep track of a subject while recording, here is what you need to do. Open the camera app on your Samsung Galaxy device. Make sure you are in video recording mode. Look for the auto framing icon on the right side of the camera interface. Tap on the auto framing icon to enable it. Once activated, the camera will attempt to track and follow the subject as they move within the frame. You can also manually select the subject by tapping on it. As you move around or the subject moves, the pinching will adjust its framing to keep the subject centered or in the frame no matter if they're a kid or a cat running around like crazy. Now with the record-breaking number of pictures you're going to take with the amazing camera of your S24, you might need a little help keeping your gallery app nice and organized. So here is a little tip for you. Open the Samsung Gallery app on your device. Navigate to the album or folder containing the photos you want to group. Tap on the three dots icon in the top right corner of the screen. From the drop-down menu, select Group Similar Images. The app will analyze your photos and group together images that it considers similar. This is particularly useful when you've taken multiple shots in succession or captured similar scenes. To view the grouped photos, tap on the group or cluster. You can then swipe through the images within that group. If you want to ungroup the photos, select the option to do so, and the images will appear individually again. Perfect to have the billion images of your cat doing nothing as organized as possible. Albums aren't useless like they were in the past, and if you don't use them now, you are definitely missing out. So here's to increase your tech power by using them. Open the Samsung Gallery app on your device. Tap on the Albums tab to access your albums. Now tap on the pluses button on the top right corner to create a new album. To create an auto-updating album. The auto-updating album can recognize different people and automatically add their photos to the album. The shared album is used to share with specific people who have the link or are in your contacts. Or, you can create a shared family album, which provides 5 gigabytes of extra storage for each person you share it with. That's pretty neat to share an album with your grandparents or parents and share photos of your kids easily, or the juicy pizza you're eating to your group of friends so they hate on you for making them hungry, to each their own. If you enjoy taking pictures of the night sky or would like to do it at some point, this next feature is for you. Open the camera app on your Samsung Galaxy S24. Tap on More to access additional camera modes. Look for the Expert RAW mode.
Once you're in the expert raw mode, return to the camera viewfinder and you should now see a small constellation icon. To enable the astrophotography mode, tap on this icon. Note that the camera app will then default to 12 megapixels. If you then tap on show to the sky guide, you'll be able to see stars and celestial objects in your camera viewfinder, making it easier to line up your shots. If you're using a tripod, you can set the duration for capturing the shot. Longer exposures can capture more light and detail in the night sky. Amazing when you're out and about under the Milky Way. Did you know your Samsung S24 has a feature close to the airdrop of an iPhone? It's called QuickShare, works with any Android device, and here's how to use it. Select the media or file you want to share on your Samsung Galaxy device. Tap the Share option. In the Sharing menu, look for QuickShare and tap on it. Your device will list nearby Android devices that have their QuickShare or Nearby Share enabled. Tap on the recipient's device to initiate the transfer. The recipient will receive a notification to accept the incoming file. Once accepted, the file will be transferred instantly. Here's how to put some sense in your device and have your power button activate the power off menu and not Bixby. Swipe down from the top of your Samsung device and hit on the gear icon to access the settings. Scroll down and select Advanced Features. In the Advanced Features menu, find and tap on Side Button. There, you'll see two options for press and hold. By default, one of them is set to Wake Bixby. Change it to Power Off Menu. Additionally, you can customize the double press action to open a specific app or function if you like. Here, I've set it to open the flashlight. Are you aware that you can watch live TV for free and it's included from the get-go in your S24? Right in your phone there is an app called Samsung O. Once in the app, you can watch live TV for free, listen to podcasts or play games. Isn't that amazing? Definitely one of the best perks of owning this phone. If you've ever been in need of subtitles but the video you're watching didn't provide any, or you don't have your earphones but you still want to understand a video? Then his next tip is for you. While watching a video on your Samsung device, press one of the volume buttons. In the volume control menu that appears, you'll see three dots at the top. Tap on those three dots. This will open a menu with various options. Look for the live caption icon at the top left corner. Tap on live caption. The live transcribe feature will be activated and you will see real-time captions appearing on your screen as the video plays. To dismiss the captions, you can either return to the volume control menu and toggle off live caption, or simply drag the caption box down to dismiss it. It's as easy as that. If you would like to be able to cut out elements in your images and do whatever the heck you want with those, then check this out. Open the image from which you want to cut out a person or object using the gallery app or any other image viewer. Tap and hold your finger on the person or object you want to cut out. This will activate the cutout tool. The tool will automatically trace around the selected person or object. You can fine tune the selection by adjusting the boundaries if needed. Once you're satisfied with the selection, tap the Save as Sticker to save the cutout as a separate image. The cutout image will be saved and can be used in various ways, such as adding it to other photos or editing it further. Did you know that your Samsung device is able to erase anything in a photo? Open the photo you want to edit using the gallery app. Tap the edit button to access the editing tools. Tap on the object eraser icon. Now it will automatically analyze the photo to identify objects. Use your finger to draw a rough outline around the object you want to remove. You don't need to be extremely precise. The tool will do its best to identify the object based on your outline. Once you're ready, tape on erase and removed. If you want to hide any app you'd like for privacy, or because you can't stand app that you cannot delete, this is how you do it. On your home screen, tap and hold on an empty area, or pinch two fingers together on the screen, and tap on settings. Now look at the bottom of the screen for hide apps on home and apps screen. From there you can choose any apps to be hidden either from you or from anyone that will have access to your phone. In case you were not aware, you can scan a document using your camera app. Open the camera app. Whenever the camera recognizes text, a text icon will appear on the right. Tap on it and take a picture. 
Now you get a scan of your document that you can adjust if need be. Once done, hit save. Now if you have sensitive documents or files to protect, you can use the secure folder feature from your Samsung device. The best way to use and access it is to slide down your quick access menu. Then hit the little pen icon. Tap on edit from the full tab. Scroll to the right on the available buttons tab until you find secure folder. Tap on it and then hit done. Back to your quick panel. Press and hold on secure folder. When it's your first time launching it, it will require to accept things and to set up a password. Once it's done, go back to your home screen. Swipe down to see quick panel and tap on secure folder to enable it. Back to your home screen, swipe up to see your apps. Now tap on the secure folder app and now you can select all files from those app to add in your secure folder. If you use your fingerprints to secure your phone and you plan on using a screen protection, it might interfere with the readings, but there is a quick fix to that. Swipe up and tap on the gear icon to reach the settings. Scroll down to security and privacy. Tap on lock screen, then hit on fingerprints. From there, re-register your fingerprints with your screen protector on. That way, it will not interfere with the readings of your fingerprints ever again. If you stuck until now, then thank you and be prepared for what's coming now, because I'm going to show you how to unlock the most powerful features of your S Pen. Would you like to be able to unlock your Samsung S24 Ultra with your S Pen to save precious time? Here is what you need to do. Swipe down on your home screen and tap on the gear icon to access the settings. Scroll down and select Advanced Features. Tap on S Pen. At the bottom, tap on More S Pen Settings. Not hit on S Pen Unlock. It will ask you to enter your PIN. Do it, and now you can easily unlock your phone only using the S Pen. But note that the first time you'll still need to enter your PIN once, and every time you take your S Pen out of your phone. Now if you're someone that thinks writing on the calendar is something you'd never need, well think again because you're missing out. Open the air command on your home screen. Now select write on calendar icon. If you don't have it, tap on the pluses icon. In the S Pen features from the shortcuts menu, select write on calendar and any other features or apps you'd like to add. Also, if you'd like the compact view of the shortcuts, go back to air command and hit compact on the menu style. After tapping on write on calendar, you arrive there. You can now write anywhere on your calendar to add events or anything else. Once done with everything, simply hit save. If you need more space, you can always zoom in and keep writing or drawing. You can also use different tools and highlight anything. Now, if you'd like to move something to another day because you made a mistake, tap on the bottom right selection icon. Now circle around your note to select it. Now you can drag your note to another day. Keep in mind that opening your calendar without using the write on calendar access won't make your calendar able to be written on. If you'd like to enable the writing and drawing on it, tap on the pen icon at the top. You're now back in the write on calendar feature and can write and draw away. This next one is simply amazing. Did you know you could write notes on your screen even if it's turned off? First, go to the settings. Scroll down and tap on lock screen and always on display. Now tap on always on display and turn it on. Hit on when to show, and be sure that it's either on always or tap to show. Now lock your screen and take your S Pen. Press and hold this pen button, then tap once on your screen. This will open your screen off notes. You can then write anything you'd like. You can then hit save, and it will be saved to your Samsung notes. Now one neat feature is to be able to pin any notes to the screen while it's off by tapping on the pin icon. So hit pin, and your note will stay there until you delete it. Additionally, you can tap on the down arrow at the bottom to get another note page. 
perfect to see your grocery list without unlocking your phone. You might have asked yourself how to use the new AI Circle to Search feature while using your S Pen. Here is how to do it. Let's say you're on a website and you want Google to search something. Tap on the Home button if you're using buttons or the Gestures bar if you're using gestures. Now simply circle what you want to look for using your S Pen. Google will now look for anything related to the image. If you'd like to search any text by the AI using your S Pen, you can as well. Tap on the Home button if you're using buttons or the Gestures bar if you're using gestures. Now simply circle the text you want more information on using your S Pen. Google will now look for anything related to the text. Now one extremely handy feature is the Smart Select tool that you can use to select any part of what you're looking at and save it for future use. For example, open any web page. Once you have something you'd like to keep for further use, use your S Pen and open your air commands. Hit on Smart Select. Now, simply tap and drag diagonally on the part you'd like to keep. From there, you can either auto-select if you'd like a selection of something more precisely. You can use the draw icon if you'd like to take any notes before saving the whole selection in your device. Or you could also pin it to your home screen. Now you can do whatever and still have it pin and even minimize it so it doesn't block too much of your screen. Now if you want to use Generative Edit hand in hand with your S Pen, here is how you can do it. Open your gallery app. Select any image you'd like to work on. Now tap on the Edit icon. Tap on the AI icon. You can now use your S Pen to press and hold, then drag any subject you'd like to move around. Now hit Generate. The AI then works its magic and gives you the final image you were looking for. Hit View Original to check if you're satisfied, then tap on Done. Next, if you've ever needed to write any notes on any document that you're reading, either to use later or to share it to someone like a good paragraph of a book, then do the following. Open the Air Command menu by tapping on the S Pen. From the Air Command menu, select Screen Write. Your device will capture a screenshot of the current screen and it will open a set of annotation tools. You can use your S Pen to write, draw, highlight, or make notes directly on the screenshot. Once you've added your notes, you can choose to save the annotated screenshot to your gallery or share it to anyone you'd like to. By the way, if you're ever in a situation where you would like to record yourself while writing notes, maybe to show someone the notes you're taking while reading their document, well you can do that with a simple tip. Open the document or any file you want to write notes on. Then open the notes by pressing and holding the S Pen button and tapping twice on your screen. Lower the opacity of the note. Reduce the space it's taking to whatever you feel is right. Now, slide down on your screen to reach the quick panel. Here, hit on Screen Recorder. Once the countdown is over, you can now start taking notes and doing whatever, and it will all be recorded. Alternatively, you could use the AZ Screen Recorder, which is a far superior app. If you'd like to know how you can easily translate anything using your S Pen, here is how to do it. Open any web page or document that has words that you'd like to translate. Using your S Pen, tap on the air commands. As translate is not available by default, hit on the pluses icon. There, hit on the translate command to add it to your air commands. Now, hit on the translate command. You now need to put your S Pen close to your screen where the text you'd like to translate is and the translation will appear. Do you want to be able to add any text from any source easily to your notes using S Pen? If yes, then when on a text you'd like to add, press and hold on the S Pen button. Then start selecting your text. From there, a menu will appear. Tap on the three dots on the right. Now tap on Add to Note. You can then put it on the whole screen. What's amazing is that as you can see at the top, the link from the website where you took the text is available. So you can easily go back to it whenever you want to and never forget your source. But if you'd like to delete the link, then press and hold on it and hit on Delete. And that's how easy it is to add any text to your notes. If you want to learn how to format handwriting notes into proper and organized text, then do the following. 
Open the Samsung Notes app where your handwritten notes are located. Select the keyboard icon to enable text input. From the text input options, choose Notes Assist. Use the S Pen to select the handwritten notes that you want to auto-format. You can drag to select a portion of the notes. After selecting the notes, you will see the Auto-Format option. Tap on it. A pop-up menu will appear with different formatting styles. Choose either headers with bullets or meeting notes. Your phone will now format your handwritten notes and get you exactly what you asked for. Would you like to use your S Pen to write anything while browsing and it to be recognized as text? Then go over to any web page. And then put your S Pen close to a text box area. Once the blue drawing sign appears, you can handwrite anything and it will automatically be recognized as text. You can also use the same technique to enter a URL such as wikipedia.com. Would you like to customize air actions so you moving your S Pen can launch the app of your choice and perform whatever task you want it to? Then swipe down from the top of your screen and hit the gear icon to access the settings. Scroll down to advanced features. Now hit on S Pen. Tap on Air Actions. And there you'll find everything you need to customize your Air Actions. By default, the press and hold opens the camera app, but you can change it to whatever app you want. Then you can see the different gestures available and in what apps they can be used before the general app actions and their corresponding Air Actions. Did you know you could extract text from any image using your S Pen? Open your gallery app. Open the image containing the text you want to extract. Now tap on the T icon on the right. Use your S Pen to select and highlight the specific text within the image that you want to extract. Once the text is selected, a pop-up menu should appear with options such as Select All and Copy. Choose the action you want to perform. For example, selecting Select All will highlight all the extracted text. You can then paste the extracted text wherever needed, such as in notes, messages, or documents. Do you know you can sign PDF using your S Pen? Here is what you need to do. Let's say you have a PDF containing a document that you must sign. Go to where your signature is needed. Now go at the top and select the Edit button. You can now write down your signature everywhere it's needed. Once done, simply hit Save. It's as easy as that. If you ever forget your specific S Pen gestures for any app, you can easily find them again by hovering over your S Pen above the air command while in the application. Here is a neat trick if you ever need to magnify any text because the thing is too damn small or because you've lost your reading glasses. Take your S Pen and open your air command. If you don't have magnify available, hit on the pluses icon. In the S Pen features, Tap on Magnify to add it to your air command. Now anytime you need it, you can hit on Magnify. Now anytime you need it, you can hit on Magnify and hover over anything to magnify it. If you need a bigger box or zoom it further, you can change both settings with the top options. If you're worried you might lose your S Pen, then be sure to check a feature made to combat your anxiety. Open your air command and tap on its settings. Scroll down and tap on More S Pen Settings. Be sure to have Warn if S Pen is left behind on. Now, whenever you leave with your phone without your S Pen, you'll receive this notification. Might have been better with an audio alarm as you might miss the notification if the phone is in your pocket, but at least we have something. Would you like to know how to draw perfect shapes using your S Pen? No matter where you are handwriting with your S Pen, whenever you're drawing a shape, hold your position and it will detect what shape you're doing and turn it to a perfect one. Easy. Would you like to be able to handwrite anything and have it converted to proper text instantly? Here is what you need to do. Open your Samsung Notes. Tap on the bottom right corner Create icon to create a new note. Now tap on the bottom right corner S Pen to Text feature. You can now start to handwrite and have it converted to proper text. I recommend you do it on landscape mode though, not only to have more space, but because this doesn't work when writing on multiple lines.
If you'd like to be able to open the air command without having to tap on the icon, do it one more time and then hit settings. Tap on air command. At the bottom you'll see open air command with pen button. Enabling this will make the air command appear by hovering your S Pen over the screen and pressing the pen button. And that is it. 106 tips and tricks and a few bonuses, so that now your S24 is perfectly customized to your liking. Like and subscribe, and see you next time.